Hi, I'm Dana. Welcome to Things I've Learned. I am an intuitive healer and a teacher, and uh, this is my fourth episode of Things I've Learned. So I just wanted to take a little time to review some things. If you're new to this channel and somebody has shared this with you, I would invite you to go back and start at the beginning and watch the short videos prior to this because unbeknownst to me my guides are amazing and they set an order so I really feel strongly that there's this incredible framework that's been built at the beginning of this channel so that's fabulous uh, and also <laughs> my younger people keep reminding me that if you like this and it is thought-provoking which is the only purpose of the channel my entire purpose of the channel is to just help you think maybe think something you haven't thought before or dive deeper into something that you've kind of touched the surface on um, if that speaks to you please like this video and subscribe if you really like it and share it please share it if you can think of even one person that might benefit from hearing this 50 year old lady talk about her life um, I would invite you to please share it so getting all of that secretarial stuff out of the way today's topic is locus of control so the locus of control definition in Webster is, um, I'm going to read it to you. The degree to which people believe they, as opposed to external forces, have control over the outcome of events in their lives. Okay, so that's, that's Webster's explanation. My learning in my 50 years of life is it's about this big and we tend to believe that it's this big and the difference between this and this is suffering. So today let's talk about locus of control. That's the seed I want to plant and maybe you can hear yourself asking through the lovely holidays because I'm recording this in mid-December where is my locus of control in this situation a lot of times our ego which is supposed to protect us but if you've watched previous videos or you've ever heard me talk before our ego is basically insane so as much as it's trying to help us it really never does our, our ego likes to control situations right locus of control we feel safe we feel um, structured we feel better when we feel like we are in control of our situation but what starts happening is when we can try to control things that are outside of our locus of control we the opposite happens like we spiral and we can be upset and we can feel hurt and we can feel resentment and it starts we start harboring ill feelings and when we harbor ill feelings we're not only harboring ill feelings towards the person right or the situation it's it's in here so the only thing that really is damaged is us it's us so as much as you may be loving or dreading the holidays um for those of you that celebrate hanukkah we just you just finished hanukkah um for those of you that uh celebrate christmas that's coming up for those of you that choose not to celebrate either you might be struggling with explaining yourself 50,000 times that you don't celebrate those things, right? <laughs> um, so what I've learned is if we keep in mind what really is inside of our control, it's healthy and it's helpful. So what is inside? I just spent a whole bunch of time explaining what isn't. So we are in charge of how we feel. We are in charge of our um, self-talk. If we are finding ourselves resentful, that is not a, a situation where we go outside of our body and blame an external source. People do it all the time. I've done it too, a million times probably. But really resentment is a gift. It's the opportunity to look at yourself and say, why am I resentful? What is going on in me? And nine times out of ten, it's because you're trying to control something that is none of your business to control. You know, we can't change the weather and we can't change our neighbor. 
and we can't change our parents or our children or our brothers or our sisters because they, just like we, have the gift of individuality. They get to choose to live their lives the way they want to live their lives. You don't have to agree with it. That's not what I'm saying. But if you butt up against it and you're pissed off or you're frustrated or you're sad, really, really sad and they've hurt you, but you don't explain to them how they've hurt you or why they've hurt you or why you're upset in a civil tone, that does nothing. It just hurts us. It hurts you. So what I'm suggesting is maybe write down locus of control and keep it somewhere close for the holidays. Maybe on a post-it note on your mirror in your bathroom. I find lots of things to write in my <laughs> mirror of my bathroom. And just keep it top of mind as you go to all of these parties or you have um, the dreaded gift exchange. I've had more people complain about gift exchanges. Where's your locus of control with the gift exchange? Not mine to figure out, yours. But I would invite you to please, um, you know, take the seed, maybe plant it, throw some earth over it, and the next time that you are having a strong emotion, a strong reactive emotion, maybe, you know, ask yourself, what is my locus of control in this situation? And see what you come up with. Um, that's all for now. Thank you, and um, we'll see you next time.